In this episode, we are going to look at how to handle reference tokens in our Angular application. We have already discussed in the previous episodes of this series what are those reference tokens and why to use them. If somehow you missed it, I am going to put the link of the video in the description section. Do check it out. So we will start this episode by doing some improvements in our sign up and login process and then we will dive deep on how to handle the reference tokens in the Angular application. I also recommend to check out the written version of this tutorial because it's easy to follow along and look up the complete code of the sections we are developing at your own pace. And if you like this kind of videos, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and without any further ado, let's jump in and start coding. As a first improvement, let's add a toaster notification to the application. So after every successful sign up and login, the toaster notification should look something like how you see on the screen. So first I'm going to open the package.json file and add a dependency called as ngx toaster. We're going to use the version 12.0.1 as of now because it is compatible with Angular 9. And after that we have to run the npm install command to install this dependency. After that open the app module.ts file and we have to add two modules here. The first one is browser animation module which is coming in from Angular animations. And the next one is toaster module. So for that we have to type toaster module dot for root which is coming in from the ngx toaster dependency. Next we are going to inject the toaster service inside the signup component along with the router class. And inside the signup method on receiving successful response, you are navigating to the login page and we are also adding a query param called registered with the value as true. So we are using this to notify the login component that registration is successful. In the case of receiving an error response, we want to display an error notification. So now let's go to the login component and here we are going to inject the router and toaster service classes. And additionally, we will also inject the activated route class to the login component to access the route parameters which is coming in from the signup component. Inside the ng on init method, we are subscribing to the query params from the activated route object. And in case we receive a query parameter with the value for registered as true, then we display the success notification message sign up successful using the toaster.success method. And the next thing is we are setting the value for the field register success message. We will be accessing this message inside the login component HTML file after the successful registration. Inside the login method, we are subscribing to the response we are receiving from the auth service.login method. And in the case of successful login, we are navigating to the root URL and then we are enabling the success notification with the message login successful. If we receive a failure response from our login call, we are setting the value for the boolean variable is error. And inside our HTML file, we have an ng if statement which displays the error and asks the user to retry. Now let's go ahead to the main section of this tutorial, which is to handle the reference tokens in our Angular application. Our backend server, which we have implemented, expects the JSON web token for each request and it checks for this token inside the authorization HTTP header. So we have to make sure that our each request going from our Angular client to the backend server contains this token. This can be achieved by using a special component in Angular called as interceptor. The concept of the interceptor is similar to the servlet filters in Java. In our case, we need an interceptor which modifies each request going to our backend server by adding the token information to the header. And of course, we also maintain the logic for refresh tokens inside this interceptor. When the client sends an expired token to the server, the server responds back with a 403 error and at that point request a new token using our refresh token and using that new access token for subsequent requests. Now let's go ahead and implement this logic in our Angular application. I'm going to create a file called as token interceptor.ts under the app folder and this file contains a class called as token interceptor which implements HTTP interceptor interface. Inside the interceptor method, we first read the token from our local storage using the auth service.get JWT token method which is just retrieving the authentication token from the local storage. If the token is valid, we will be setting the value inside the authorization headers. If our JSON web token is active, this, will, this is how the process works. Now if the token we are setting to the headers is an invalid token, we receive an error response from our backend. In that case, we have to prepare our client to make the reference token call to the backend. And when we make this call, we have, we have to temporarily block all the outgoing backend calls for this user. And once we receive a new authentication token from our backend, we are going to release all the requests again. So we are able to fulfill this functionality with the use of a Boolean variable called as is token refreshing and a behavior subject called as refresh token subject 
which in our case acts as a semaphore to block the outgoing calls. The main reason to use a behavior subject instead of a subject or an observable is because the behavior subject can have a value assigned to it. So when we receive the new token from the refresh token method, we can assign the token to the behavior subject and access the new token inside the interceptor. Coming to our refresh token method, if we check the REST API documentation, this method takes in two fields as input, the refresh token and username. So we are constructing this object inside the refresh token method and making a HTTP POST call to our backend. For this POST call, we are receiving the login response object from our backend as response and we are storing the new authentication token and username values inside the local storage. As we discussed before, we are setting the new access token value to the behavior subject and setting the ease token refreshing field value to false or else all the outgoing calls will be failing with a 403 error. Okay, now before we test this implementation, we need to create a home page component in our application. For that, I'm going to type ngGC home. This component retrieves and displays all the posts we have in the database. So for that, now open the written tutorial and copy the HTML under the create home page component section and paste it into the home component HTML file. I'll be explaining what's inside this file in the next tutorial, but for now, as we are just testing the refresh token functionality, let's leave this as it is. So, so I'm going to create a new service using the command ngGS shared post. So this will create a class called as post service under the shared folder. And inside the constructor, I'm going to inject the HTTP client class to our post service. And let's create a method called as get all posts. So now let's go ahead and check our REST API documentation. So you can see this is just a normal get call and we receive an array of uh, object which contains all these fields which are related to the post. So now let's go back to the VS code and create a file called as postmodel.ts and inside this file I'm going to create a class called as postmodel which contains all the fields in the REST API documentation. Alright now let's open the home component class and here I'm going to declare a variable called as posts which is of type array of post model and inside the constructor I'm going to first inject the post service class and I'm going to call the get all post method of the post service and subscribe to the response and assign the response to the post variable inside the component. Finally we have to add route to the home page component so open up the app routing module.ts file and add an entry to the routes array just above the sign up route information and specify the component as home component. All right, so that's a lot of changes we have done. We also need one small change before we go ahead and test the implementation. We forgot to add the CSS entry for the ngx toaster library inside our angular.json file. So let's quickly add it just below the styles.css declaration. So let's restart the server just to make sure that all the configuration is up to date and test our implementation. First, I'm going to register as a new user and let's see if the sign up successful notification is visible or not. So we can see this notification, that's good. Now let me quickly activate this user or else we will not be able to log in. And now let's try to log in. You can see we are able to see the toaster notification with the message login successful. And we are also able to see the post information which is coming from our backend. This looks ugly, but for now let's leave it. We will make it look decent in the next tutorial. But for now, this is it. I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies.